Um, so it is a extraordinary pleasure to have you with us tonight for this info session for the second annual Epic Trail Challenge, insert fanfare here. Um, it's really great to have you here, not only because we're doing something awesome to support the folks at Santa Rosa Community Health, but also because this is a really incredible program that I think you're gonna love. So my name is Lori Lynn. Um, I'm a professional fundraiser. I've been doing fundraising for over 10 years now. Um, and um, I've been a hiker for much longer than that. When I was a kid, my dad, uh, right when I was like 10 or 12, somewhere in there, he started taking us to uh, Golden Gate Canyon State Park, which is in Colorado, not near the Golden Gate Bridge at all. Um, and um, by the time all was said and done, and I graduated from high school and, and college, um, I had a pin that said, I hiked Golden Gate, which means that I hiked every single dang trail that there was to hike at Golden Gate Canyon State Park, and it was really awesome. So um, I, I'm a, I became a lifelong fan of hiking, and um, I'm so grateful to have this opportunity to combine my love for hiking and my enthusiasm for fundraising with the great work that's being done at Santa Rosa Community Health. Um, that's very cool. Um, so uh, I wanna share that we did our inaugural Epic Trail Challenge last fall. Three of the folks on this call were um, challengers in that adventure. Um, and um, it was truly epic. Um, yeah. We had 42 folks who helped raise $103,000. Um, they hiked either 11 or 20 miles across the Sonoma Valley uh, on a beautiful day in November. It was like the perfect temperature, perfect weather. Um, and it, we, we are excited to be back doing it again this year, um, bigger and better. We learned a lot. <laughs> There's still a lot to learn um, and we're having a good time. So um, I'm also excited. One of the things that we learned was the value of partnering with folks in our community um, to help with training. So I'm excited to have on this call with us tonight two of the folks who are signing up as our training partners for this year's Epic Trail Challenge. Um, we've got Kenny from Heart and Soul Sports and Scott from Baseline Training. So thank you guys both for being here. Um, I'd love to start out with asking you all to tell us a little bit about um, why you're partnering with us on the Epic Trail Challenge and what you're hoping folks will achieve as a result of your partnership. Kenny, you wanna go first? Um, sure, thanks, Laurie. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, um, like Laura said, my name is Kenny from, um, I am one of the owners at Heart and Soul Sports and um, I, last year I saw that um, Santa Rosa Community Health was starting this and I reached out to her and, um, and asked if we could join as a, as a partner. Um, my goal, I'm, I've been um, doing different training groups um, in um, through the store for like the last 10 or so years. And really I've seen the um, kind of the excitement it brings. Um, I like um, showing people new and what's, you know, what's outdoor and showing them different experiences. Um, Sonoma County has such great um, trails. Um, you know, we're very lucky to be here that we have so many parks um, around that stretch from the coast um, to kind of the, um, you know, up, up to some of the mountains around here. Um, and so we want to, um, I mean, so basically um, we just want to help people get outdoors and get um, motivated and, um, and see what's out there. Um, we have, um, we do a lot of running and walking, um, we're a running and walking specialty store. And along with that, we have a good section of trail shoes too which are basically that cross, um, I like to describe it as a cross between a running shoe and a hiking boot. Um, so they may be not quite as stiff and rugged as um, hiking boots are, um, but for, um, for hikes, um, you know, lasting, you know, just um, an hour or two or even all day long, um, they're plenty, um, plenty durable and will get you through all types of terrain. Cool. Thank you, Kenny. And um, you can tell that Kenny's super knowledgeable about all kinds of stuff. And we'll get to hear lots of information 
um, throughout the course of the training program um, over time. So I'm super grateful to have you here and to have your expertise on the team. Hey, Scott, you want to tell us some stuff? All right. My name is Scott Macedonio. I am co-owner of Baseline Training, where I mainly specialize in movement quality and movement control, which means how can I make your body feel better by getting stronger to accomplish your task? So last year, my client, Barbara Thorson, hit me up and said, hey, I have this crazy adventure I want to do. And she wanted to hike 20 miles. So while she was doing the training hike, she realized she needed a little more strength to accomplish it. So we worked on a whole training program to help her accomplish it. She was so happy, so glad that she got to meet most of the people, probably some of you in this room as well. And she is excited to actually be a part of it, being a volunteer during this well as well. So I'm here, answer any of your fitness questions, help you along the way, whether it's a strength question, a mobility question, I'm just here to help guide you to accomplish this and enjoy it. This is all about having fun, getting outside and seeing amazing Sonoma County. Right on. Scott's been instrumental in, in really up, upping our training game this year. Um, so I'll show you a little bit more about what he's been helping us develop. Um, so Kenny, Scott, you're welcome to stick around for the whole rest of this adventure and see what we're up to. And if you need to skedaddle, I totally understand. Um, thank you so much, both of you, for being here. Um, it's, it's always important to, to know the flavor of the folks that you're hanging out with. So, so there's, there's, a little, there's a little taste of, of their spice there. So um, does anybody know anything? Yes, Anne, hi, welcome. Hi, um, could, Kenny, could you just repeat the name of your, company, your business there again? It's Heart and Soul Sports. That's it, thank you. And You're soul welcome. is spelled like the bottom of your foot. All right, um, so uh, the question to you all is, does anybody know anything about Santa Rosa Community Health? No, yes, maybe a little bit. Yeah, you went on a tour, Joanne. <laughs> Damn it, you should know stuff. <laughs> well, the good news is um, I'm gonna tell you some things and um, I am gonna start by sharing my screen here so you can see this lovely adventure on PowerPoint. So here we go. Um, the, oh, we're going right from the middle. That's exciting. Ignore all these parts. There we go. All right. Um, so um, it's lovely to point out that um, we are celebrating 25 years of community health through Santa Rosa Community Health. Um, the agency was started in 1996 by six doctors and a family nurse practitioner who really wanted to be the people's doctors. They wanted to make sure that the folks in their community um, were getting the healthcare that they needed and deserved. And so they um, opened up the Southwest Community Health Center on Lombardi Court, right in the heart of Roseland. Um, and since then, you'll, you'll, you'll get to see here how over time the agency has grown to really encompass um, so much more than, than um, the original vision um, while still holding on to the original vision. So the mission of the organization is to serve our diverse community by providing primary care that's not just good, but it's also excellent. And it includes uh, medical care, dental services, and mental health care as well. So when we say whole person care, that's what we mean. It's, it's comprehensive. We're not just treating body parts or writing prescriptions. We're really caring for the whole person with compassion and respect. Um, our care is also culturally responsive. Um, it means that our staff understands and respects that different cultural approaches to healthcare are necessary. Um, and they work with our patients to really find healthcare solutions that are appropriate, meaningful, and achievable. And our care is accessible to all people. Um, that means no matter someone's ability to pay, the language they speak, or where they live in Santa Rosa, they can really count on Santa Rosa Community Health to care for them. And finally, what's kind of nearest and dearest to my heart is this recognition that the health center advocates for healthcare as a human right, simply because it's fundamental to social justice. Um, so uh, a lot of people don't know um, how broad the care is that or the, the services are that are provided through Santa Rosa Community Health. Um, so here's just a little, a little flavor of it. Um, Santa Rosa Community Health uh, cares for one in four folks in Santa Rosa. That's um, about 40,000 kids, adults, and elders. 
Um, our dental care has touched the lives of over 10,000 people and 35 members of our community have gotten mental health support, particularly during this very challenging year. Um, our team is also doing intensive work with nearly 500 patients who are struggling with substance and opioid use to the tune of about 5,000 visits. So there's this expansion of, of the services that are being offered um, into a really important arena. All of this work is done at eight campuses um, where nearly 500 employees work to make healthcare happen for everyone in our community. And now um, Santa Rosa Community Health is playing this very important role in addressing COVID in our community. Um, to date, we've provided about 7,400 COVID tests and the health center estimates that we'll actually be providing close to 18,000 vaccinations this year. Um, they're doing a clinic this Saturday for a thousand uh, seniors who are ages 75 and over. Um, it's pretty exciting. So um, our patients are the folks who can't afford private health insurance. Many of them are essential workers who have COVID, who have been exposed to COVID or are at risk of getting COVID. And this plays deeply into why we're doing the Epic Trail Challenge again this year. So um, I like to give folks an opportunity to meet our patients. Um, I've got about an eight minute video that I wanna show you. And uh, we did our first info session yesterday and one of my friends was in the, in the session and afterwards I was like, okay, did I flub anything up? And she was like, no, and I loved the video. The minute you said you were gonna show a video, I was like, oh God, I don't wanna watch a video, but I really loved the video. So I hope you have the same experience. Uh, here, here, here you go, meet some of um, Santa Rosa Community Health's really um, important patients. Porque tenía un problema bien serio y por eso yo me mantenía con una presión bien alta. Me daban convulsiones. Yo casi no salía mucho así de fuera porque cuando acordaba ya estaba en el suelo. Pues la, la doctora Patricia ha estado de, a, atenta a mí, pues gracias a Dios a ella se ha se ha prestado para atendernos porque me atiende a mí y atiende a mi esposo. Ella está pendiente cuando me voy a hacer el examen de sangre y me sale alta, me llama, ven, vamos a ver por qué esta cosa te está, se te va disparando tanto. No que me siento algo optimista pues porque la doctora nos lleva con control de que no pasemos, muy, no se nos suba mucho. Ya no ocupo porque vaya voy con la doctora Patricia y platicamos y ella me entiende. Lo especial que hay porque la doctora es muy cariñosa conmigo. Ella sí que es todo con nosotros, tanto conmigo como con mi esposo. Pues yo le agradezco a la doctora porque ella está al cuidado de nosotros, de estar al cuidado de, de su medicina, de las citas. Y pues yo le agradezco mucho a la doctora y a la clínica porque está siempre abierta para nosotros. Y pues por eso yo agradezco a Dios por, por ese cuidado que han tenido conmigo. Si no hubiera sido la, la clínica que yo fui a dar allí y los médicos, pues yo ya no existiera. Estoy muy, muy contenta, muy agradecida con todo. Y Dios les va a bendecir en gran manera. I was a bodybuilder before, and I had, and I was muscular and, and and even my face, everything changed after I had cancer. I couldn't walk, it took me forever. I couldn't pick up a two and a half pound weight. I couldn't do anything. 
I'm an orchid grower and, and I did living orchid arrangements for private clients. And I had, I had a business for 30 years that I did that. Once I had to stop working, my income stopped. And it was like, this is not fair to my husband. This is not fair to my family. Yeah, I was, I really thought about ending it, you know, like getting out and just leaving the planet. You know, am I really going to be accepted? Am I going to feel comfortable? And and will I be able to be honest with what's going on? And I'm, I was totally able to do that here. Ellie right away listened to everything that I said. She's knowledgeable. I love. She makes me laugh all the time. I feel like Lolly's my protector. Any, any problems I've ever had, I go right to Lolly and Lolly's I've always solved it. Ilka really helped me with my depression and got me into a survivor's group. We started to do Qigong. It's my meditation, my exercise, my peace of mind. She's helped me realize that I have a lot to be grateful for that I can continue, that my problems are fixable. My HIV is stable and my cancer is stable and, and I'm not so afraid of the world anymore. I actually started to golf. I feel great. My mind feels good. I, I just feel like a different person. If I didn't have the team, I, I would have been lost. Yeah, they all helped me survive. When I was 19 years old, I went to a rheumatologist who diagnosed me with psoriatic arthritis. He also told me that I would be in a wheelchair by the age of 30, which was really discouraging, and it's a pretty horrible thing to tell someone who's that fragile at that young of an age. My body was in so much pain that I couldn't move my fingers. My, I couldn't drive anymore. I didn't really know what to do. I was looking for answers, but I didn't really know how to change my life. Amy actually saw me probably at my worst. I would sit in her office and just bawl and say, I can't move my arms, like I'm in so much pain. And she started crying <laughs> when I was crying and she held my hands and just said like, we're gonna do everything we can to make you better. And she meant it and she, she really did it, it's awesome. And I was starting to go to UCSF and I was single for the first time in years and I was doing all of this stuff on my own and it was, it was really overwhelming. Just having someone listen and care about where you're at and where you're going and really pay attention to you and to be heard when you're struggling and in life and everything seems really challenging. Aaron really helped me a, a lot. I've been a full-time student for, this is my second semester now. Got straight A's last semester. <laughs> I've never been treated with such kindness and with such compassion and so sincerely. It's really surprising how much a difference that, that makes. Really connecting with your patients can change, help change their lives. Change mine.
So Santa Rosa Community Health is really about creating relationships and changing lives. And that's a big part of um, why we're doing this is to support that amazing work. Um, and those kinds of trusting relationships are really key to what Santa Rosa Community Health is currently doing in our community with um, helping stop the spread of COVID and why the health center is really uniquely positioned to make this kind of an impact. And it's why even now in, in the midst of all the, all the things that are going on, uh, we're moving forward. Um, we're, hey, there's you, Barbara, where um, this woman is in our, on our call right now. Isn't that great? Um, <laughs> we're doing this for the second time during some really um, epic times. We've got COVID, we've got who knows what kind of weather we're having right now. It may have changed in the last 10 minutes. Um, there's lots of political changes taking place. And in, uh, amongst all of it, we're, we're learning how to take care of ourselves um, in this sort of new environment. Um, and there's a lot that's outside of our control um, that impacts what we're doing on a daily basis. And so I'm acknowledging that there's another challenge in the mix here um, that we're actually being called to proceed with a certain level of uncertainty and finding ways to be okay with that. Um, and uh, we're simultaneously saying, oh yeah, we can totally do this. That all that's going on, no problem. We can, we can do this. And, and here's, here's our commitment to what's, what's going on with the Epic Trail Challenge. We're committed to doing as much as we can for as long as we can. We're going to go as far as we can with the health and safety of our challengers and our community as our top priorities because we're a health center. And the reality is that we believe in this program so much that we're willing to take a risk um, that we, we, we've really seen how together, no matter what happens, we can at least make some difference in our own lives and make an epic difference for those who depend on Santa Rosa Community Health for their um, ability to live full and healthy lives. So um, this brings us to what the heck is an epic trail challenge? Uh, and uh, there's two challenging parts <laughs> to the challenge. Um, the first is it's uh, the second annual endurance hike that's hosted by Santa Rosa Community Health. There are two routes proposed again this year, um, an 11 mile route and a 20 mile route. Um, and it's also a fundraising event. And we'll talk more about the challenge of the fundraising later. For now, let's, let's talk about the hiking challenge itself. Um, right now we are on track to have the Epic Trail Challenge taking place across Cordum Trail, the Pumo Canyon Trail and Willow Creek State Park. Um, so we've got um, permits, appli permit applications are submitted. All signs are good that those permits are gonna be approved. There's a caveat around COVID. We, we can't control what's gonna happen. And if there's a shelter in place order or any kind of orders around um, humans gathering, then um, the state will pull that permit. <laughs> so um, we're, we're otherwise looking really good um, to have this happen. They're feeling very optimistic and so are we about the, the reality of, of this being able to happen there. If it doesn't, we'll have a backup plan. So don't worry. Um, the show will go on. It may just not be at, at this amazing location. Um, so both of the routes, whether uh, you're thinking about hiking the 11 mile route or the 20 mile route, both of them are challenging and they're both really attainable. And that's where our training program really shows up and shines. Um, our goal is to give you as much support as possible in this environment so that you feel both safe and confident training for and completing this epic hike with us. Uh, so one of the primary ways we're offering support is through our training hikes, which are not required, but they're highly recommended. So what you're looking at here is information about our training hikes. This is the ugliest slide on here, but it's got the funniest quote. And um, Trisha, who's on this call, is, is the one who's being quoted there. And her hiking buddy is also on the call, who's, uh, who's, who's quoted about in this quote. Uh, so what you need to know is that our... Um, Training hikes will start on February 20th. Um, they're um, taking place every Saturday for the 13 weeks leading up to Challenge Day, which is on May 22nd. And the whole purpose is to build confidence and prepare us for, for Challenge Day. 
So this is the general arc of the training mileage. You'll see there's a, a number like 1.5 and then a slash for three. So at the, at the first training hike, folks who are training for that 11 mile hike will have a one and a half mile route. And the folks who are training for the 20 mile hike will have a three mile route. You'll have access to each other's routes. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. <laughs> there are no rules. There are very few rules. Um, about, about the hiking. Um, so after each hike, the distance and elevation increase. Um, so week by week, we'll go up in distance and in the amount of elevation that we're climbing and, and, and coming back down. Um, and then you'll see here in early May, May 8th, we have our longest hike. And then the, the distance tapers again before the actual hike. That's so that your body has some time to sort of be in prime condition um, for getting, 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 getting epic on challenge day. Um, so um, this mileage is approximate. Um, once the actual routes are created, that might change a little bit. So just know that um, th th this is this is not the this is not the training hike bible. <laughs> um, uh, and a, a couple thoughts to consider as you're as you're figuring out whether this is a, a thing you want to do. One is that closer to challenge day. Um, the hikes can take a long time. Some, are, some, some folks um, who are training for the 20 mile hike um, are gonna take 10 to 12 hours on Saturdays to do these hikes. Um, and sometimes the hikes involve some travel time from wherever you live to wherever we're going. So um, no more than an hour usually, we're not, we're not going to remote parts of, of the community, but um, just know that there's a, there's a, a time commitment to do the, to do the training hikes. Um, and um, uh, I have a repeated note here to myself. So you can know twice that these are highly recommended, but you don't have to do them. <laughs> um, there's more uh, assistance with training as well. So this is a sample of what March will look like um, for this training hike. Um, and um, some of this is different from last year. Some of it's the same. So. Uh, Ultimately, it's a major improvement over last year. So um, Scott, who spoke with us earlier, has um, really helped us um, get our cross training and our training program up to a whole new level. And between Scott and Kenny both, um, we're going to have a lot more support and information for our hiking and our endurance and training part of this this adventure. So um, I'll, I'll walk you through what all those things look like. Um, first, um, let's start over here on Sunday. You see it says rest. Yay, that's exactly what that sounds like. It's a rest day. Um, on Monday, you see here's this, um, here's some mileage up here on Monday and on Wednesday and on Thursday. So during the weeks, um, we're giving you an encouragement to do some additional mileage. In addition to the training hikes that we're doing on Saturdays, we're saying it's going to be good for you to get out there and hike a mile and a half or three miles in advance of going on the training hike on Saturday. It makes a difference. Um, and if, if that hike is you walking out your front door and walking around the block, great. If that hike is you parking as far away from the front door of the grocery store as you can and walking in, fantastic. If it's getting out on a trail, hooray. Um, the point is that there's, there's options there um, for you to follow. Um, you'll see here that here's here's on on these three days we've got training clinics that are scheduled so um, Kenny from Heart and Soul is going to be doing training clinics on the first and third Mondays of each month um, and Scott's going to do a training clinic for us um, these are all over the noon lunch hour um, on um, the second Mondays of each month and the topics are things like most important things to know about getting started avoiding injury uh, gear that's available to make hiking easier or better and how to select the right hiking gear for yourself. Kenny's really good at hiking gear, gear hacks also. Thank you, Kenny. Um, how to prevent blisters, supporting food and hydration. And we've got tons of time built into these clinics for you to come with your specific questions about you. It goes, when I walk like this, this is what happens, or my boots make my feet swell or whatever. Um, there's plenty of time in these training clinics for you to get those questions answered and addressed. So then here on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you'll see that there's cross training. 
And um, down here at the bottom, you can see that Scott has hooked us up with some very specific cross-training exercises that we can do. And these, as time goes on, they um, get longer um, or require more reps or um, have more time that you do them during. Uh, and these are, again, suggestions. So if there's cross-training stuff you already love to do, if you're a swimmer or a weightlifter or a yogi, and you would rather do that stuff, go ahead. If you're showing up going, I need some help figuring out how to get back in my body because I've been sitting on the couch eating potato chips and developing a relationship with Netflix, then here's some tools for you to do that with. So um, other things on here to note, um, here's our training hikes on Saturdays. And just an aside, I'll point out, here's, here's fundraising clinic and here's fundraising clinic. I'll, I'll talk about those later, but just know that those are, those are there. Um, one of the things that I learned from Scott last year, one of the first things he said to me, and it was the moment I knew he was, he was ours, um, was the idea that you can go out and do a hike. You, you, could, you could probably go out and hike 11 miles or 20 miles with minimal training. Like you could probably do it, but it's going to suck. <laughs> it's going to hurt. You're going to have, you're going to have some pain and struggle at the other end. So this schedule, um, it, it when, when you do as much of it as you can, it's, it's, you know, it's not required, but when you do as much of it as you can, you come out on the other end, you have a really great time, you enjoy the hike, you get to see the beauty and, and revel in the greatness of being out on the trail, rather than thinking about how much your left leg hurts or whatever, because you've worked all the details out. So that's good stuff about the training, the train, the upping of the training here. So, um, I wanted to talk about safety, um, uh, both with COVID and, and in, in addition to COVID. Um, so one of the ways that we've been pretty successful in, in maintaining our safety when it comes to gathering is staggering start times. We do that for both our training hikes uh, and for our um, challenge day. And we practice physical distancing on the trails and we wear masks when a six foot distance isn't possible. So we, we all do that, we all model it for each other. Um, and then we recognize that that might still be scary for some folks. So um, we invite you to do your practice hike anytime. If coming and hiking with us on Saturday morning doesn't feel right to you and you know a time when the park is less full and you want to go then, then you can go. Um, we distribute information about the routes in um, our Epic Scoop newsletter, which comes out the Tuesday before each practice hike. Um, and um, if you're worried about hiking alone, you can uh, ping folks on our private Facebook group. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. Um, and you'll likely find a hiking buddy that way. Um, and if you wanna have a conversation about um, safety tips for hiking solo and the benefits of solo hiking, I'd be super happy to have that conversation with you. Um, other kinds of safety. Um, we do practice hike check-ins. This was Kenny's brilliant idea. Thank you, Kenny, for this influence on our hike. Um, we have a meeting window um, uh, the morning of the hike. It's usually between 7.30 and 8 in the morning. Sorry if you're not a morning person. Um, I'm there at the meetup spot. I'm masked, I'm sanitized, and I check you in. I also talk with you about the route, any concerns you have, check on your water supply, learn I needed to do that the hard way, and then send you on, on your way on the trail. Um, if you want to hike with somebody else on training hike days, you can hang out for a minute. Uh, this happened, actually, that's how the people who know each other on this call have, have known each other, is because somebody hung out and said, hey, let's hike together. And somebody else said, OK, and they did. Um, so uh, if hiking alone is a concern to you, um, we can do it. Um, we can do it safely with distancing and masking. Um, and then here's the part that Kenny taught me. Um, at the end of your hike, when you are done, since we're not all hiking together and we're spread out all across the trail, I ask you to text me when you're done. Um, and it turns out that if you forget to text me when you're done, I call you. And if I don't get you, then I call your emergency contacts and say, hi, so-and-so is missing. Um, here's, here's where they were last time we saw them. This year, we're also doing bandanas. Um, they're bright red. They have our logo on them. Um, this is a great way for us to both recognize each other on the trail and also know, like, if that person who's lying in the ditch down there has on a red bandana, they're one of ours and we should help. <laughs> um, we also got really clear last year that hiking with 
a, a GPS program is way better than hiking without one. So um, we use Gaia GPS um, for both our trail routes and we encourage you to use that or all trails, whatever kind of GPS system you like to use um, so that you can make sure that you're going in the right direction and eventually gonna make it back to your car. We have a couple other resources that are, support both the training and the fundraising pieces. I mentioned our Epic Scoop newsletter. It's served weekly. Um, and these, these are coming out. Um, last year, they came out at 9 AM on Tuesdays. Now they're coming out at 4 PM on Tuesdays because some of us learned some things. Um, so uh, the Epic Scoop has answers to questions that we hear out on the trail or in the Facebook group. There's updates or changes that take place as we're negotiating all this stuff that's going on during these times. Um, there's information about where the next hike is. Um, we congratulate um, hikers who have hit specific fundraising milestones. And if we're lucky, then we get Scott or Kenny to talk to us about um, the stuff they know, um, how to do endurance hikes, how to be outdoors, um, how to do in, you know big events like this the healthy way, tips on gear, what shoes to wear, how to deal with blisters, muscle cramps, all that stuff. Um, we also have a private Facebook group that's just for our challengers. Um, so um, it's a great place to ask questions in the community. Um, it, it's an opportunity to organize hikes or ask for and suggest routes. Um, and during these times, it's kind of the it's kind of the way that we get community out of the the whole Epic Trail Challenge. Um, it's it's sort of a, a nice home base for that. Uh, I'm also, um, I'll just dangle a little carrot. I'm working for some, on some incentives to be more active in the Facebook group. So um, stay, stay tuned for more on that front. All right, so we've trained together for 13 weeks. We're headed out to the Sonoma Coast for the Epic Trail Challenge on May 22nd. Here's what that day has in store for us. Um, we've got aid stations that are set up along the route. Um, they have uh, water, food, medics, chairs, kind of a, you know, the, all, all the stuff you need or want. Um, and um, we're, we will work it out so that it's all in compliance with health orders and we're keeping you safe. Um, we also give the opportunity to have a comfort bag. That's a super fancy name for a trash bag that you can bring the morning of challenge day uh, and fill it with whatever you want us to hand back to you at the halfway point. So last year, people brought uh, dry socks and a change of clothes, a towel. Some people brought chocolate that they really liked. Some people brought a massage gun. I thought that was really smart. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that you can put in your massage bag. We don't, we don't look, we don't judge. We just hand it to you when you ask for it. I um, want to let you know that we'll probably have some pretty early start times um, for folks who are doing the 20 mile hike. We might even be starting before sunrise. So just prepare yourself between now and May 22nd. You, you might have to get up real early that day. Um, uh, we'll stagger the start times, as I mentioned. Um, and that means that there will be you know, 10 people who start at one time and then 15 minutes later um, up until everybody has a chance to leave without tripping on each other. Um, the idea is to minimize the number of crowds that are gathering um, and keep everybody as safe as possible. Uh, then once you finish, you cross the finish line, we will have your epic party for you and congratulate you appropriately, celebrate your monumental achievement. Um, hand you your epic t-shirt and then it's kind of up to COVID what happens next. I want to I want to have a party. <laughs> I want us to all hang out and drink beer and eat yummy food and tell stories about what happened on the trail and did you see this part and oh my god I thought I was going to die on the downhill and all that stuff. Um, let's see if we can do that. I, I, let's let's I, I'm, I'm a pretty good manifester. Let's see if I can manifest that for us. So that completes sort of the details about the, the hiking challenge. Let's talk more about the fundraising piece and why we're fundraising this year. It's a little different than it was last year. Um, this year, the funds that we're raising through the Epic Trail Challenge are really about supporting our community members who have COVID, who've been exposed to COVID or who are at risk of getting COVID. And while many uh, people across the county fit into this category, it, it has to be said that the Latina, Latino, and Latinx community members of our community account for 65% of our COVID cases, but make up only 27% of our county's population. So it just is super, super clear that members of the Latina, Latino, and Latinx community are being disproportionately impacted by COVID. Uh, there's lots of reasons for that. Um, 
uh, many of our patients are at greater risk for getting COVID because of the vital work that they're doing. They're in the essential roles that are keeping us moving forward during this time. Some folks live in homes with multiple generations of their families, making it difficult or impossible to practice physical distancing. Uh, others have no alternatives other than going to work in order to provide for their families. So as a result, most of our patients are at greater risk of exposure and infection. And at the same time, COVID-19 demands care that goes above and beyond the services that we regularly provide at the health center. Uh, and these additional services aren't billable through our, our regular channels. And yet we believe that everyone deserves a full and healthy life. So dollars that we're raising through the Epic Trail Challenge this year make it possible for us to really meet the full scope of needs by doing a few things. One, um, offering free testing by bilingual, bicultural providers who are trusted because they're from our community. And, because, and they've really worked hard, as you saw in the video, to build these relationships with our patients that are lasting and, and um, caring. We also um, are giving patients who have to quarantine or isolate, as well as their families, the food and supplies they need to immediately stop additional exposure. Uh, we're regularly reaching out to um, COVID patients who are, require ongoing um, clinical support, um, guidance, and meaningful connection, right? That, that, that's a really big, important part of, of surviving and healing from all this. Um, we're ensuring that each patient is connected to the many other amazing organizations in our community that are providing vital COVID services and support during these times. And we're teaching culturally respectful and relevant practices about how to reduce the risk of getting or spreading COVID. So the, the bottom line here is that we're ensuring the basic human right to health care for our valued community members who have been deeply impacted by COVID. And that's why we're fundraising. So just like hiking uh, 11 or 20 miles is a huge challenge, we know that fundraising for many of you feels like an even greater challenge. Uh, so that's why we've got tons of support in place to help you reach both of these challenges with flying colors. So let's first talk about our minimum fundraising goals and some new options for challengers this year. So we're, um, we've got several ways that you can participate in um, our fundraising part goals here. So um, an individual challenger um, is asked to raise a minimum of $25, 20, $25, yay, no, $2,525. Why the extra 25 on the end? It's because it's our 25th anniversary and that's cute. So um, that's why, but it's hard to say it turns out. Um, we've also got um, this year um, some fun new options for participation that we're, that we're trying out. So that, that we're beta testing all of this. So um, what we heard last year was that there are folks from the same household who really wanted to participate, but um, participating as individuals and having to raise $5,000 as a couple is really hard because they have the same, uh, same contacts in the world. So we're going to try doing an, a household team this year, which includes up to two adults and whatever kids are in the household who can safely participate in this working with the insurance company and legal people to make sure we're not doing like we may need to have age requirements so ask me your questions about that soon um, we're also opening the door to nonprofit and workplace teams um, the fundraising amounts are different but the the abilities are of participation are the same so you can have up to five challengers per team and unlimited fundraisers per team um, so we're hoping and excited about the possibility that um, this will open doors for even more folks to be able to participate with us. And these numbers might feel really impossible to you. Um, some folks, like their eyeballs get all big and, and there's like a panic reel running in the back of their head. And I, I, I think if you saw what we saw um, with our challengers last year, you'd think otherwise. Here's, here's some of the things that our challengers said. Um, here's Barbara Thorson that Scott mentioned earlier. She said, it was the largest amount I've ever fundraised and the most difficult challenge, a physical challenge I've done. It showed me I can set very large goals and chip away at them to accomplish them. Here's Natalia Camacho Worms, who's an employee at the health center. She said, I realized I learned that I can do hard things and I can fundraise without being annoying. She came to all the fundraising clinics I did last year and had lots of questions and was really nervous about asking for money. And when she did, it came. It was pretty cool. And here's our friend Trisha again. You're just very popular in this PowerPoint, Trisha. 
She wrote, I'm proud that I stepped out of my comfort zone and became a fundraiser. In the past, I would just do the donation myself and not reach out to my friends and family. This time I put myself out there and learned that people want to give for a good cause if I would just be brave enough to ask. So you may be wondering, like, how did they do it? Um, and I, really, most of it was just mustering up the courage to ask. And also, we've got a really amazing toolbox that'll help you get there. So um, for starters, we give you your own fundraising website, and this is for individuals or for teams. And those who were here last year will be very thrilled to know that we're using a completely different platform this year. Um, we're saying goodbye to just giving and hello to Classy. Um, I think you're going to like it a lot more. Um, you'll be amazed. I mean, just uh, just downright amazed by how many unexpected people donate to you through a web page. Um, it's, it's a true acknowledgement that what you're trying to do through the Epic Trail Challenge is really a big deal and your peeps really want you to succeed. So that, that's super cool. Um, new this year, um, I pointed out on the calendar um, as we were going through the training calendar, we've got fundraising clinics happening every other week. So um, again, during lunchtime, you can spend an hour with me answering questions. Um, I can give individual support. We can talk about what people are doing that are su that's successful. <laughs> we can do a little bit of therapy around you know, working through fear. <laughs> um, and sometimes it's just about making time to do the thing. So maybe you just wanna come on and have support while you send your email out. Um, We've also got a great fundraiser toolkit. It's got templates with all this fancy language you hear me use about what we're raising funds for, and also to help you promote yourself um, so that your friends understand what you're doing. Um, so we've got email templates, photo ideas, sample social media posts, video ideas, and templates, just like pretty much anything you might want to use to get information out there. Um, there's lots of um, fun and creative ideas that folks came up with last year um, that, that we have in our toolkit as well. But really, honestly, the most successful fundraisers just shared their personal stories about why they were doing this um, with their family, with their friends, um, maybe even an outer circle beyond that, um, and brought people along with them on their journey, told their story of when it was hard and when it was great. And look at this cool thing I saw and I hurt my toe today. Um, and quite frankly, they've been dazzled by the response that they received. Um, so I, I, I can't even tell you how great it felt um, to get just a $20 gift from somebody that I hadn't seen in years. It, it's There's something about it that feels really awesome. And I think that's um, a big part of what our challengers shared around the fundraising was that um, while it was scary to them, they also recognized that it was a great source of support for them. They felt like their community, their family were really standing up with them to help move them along the way. Um, we're also happy to get you Epic Trail Challenge branding if you want to create or sell items with your or your team name on them. Um, and always check with your employer if you've got one. Um, sometimes they uh, like to sponsor or do matching gifts, so those are options as well. And then finally, I'm always available to our, um, our challengers to provide one-on-one -on -one personal support, um, help leverage your you-ness to raise funds and help work through whatever fears you might have um, and that might be getting in your way. So that those are, those are all the tools available for fundraising support. Um, so I'm hoping that you're thinking, well, yeah, when is she gonna talk to us about how to get started? Because this is your moment right here. So um, here's, here's what you gotta do to get started. Um, early next week, you're gonna hear from me with registration information. Um, and so if you're ready to get, get going, all you need to do is um, fill out and sign your registration documents. All of this is the same, whether you're doing 11 or 20 miles. And we're asking that people um, in order to register, uh, make a $100 donation, like a registration fee. Um, it goes towards your fundraising minimum. So you would fill out your, your registration documents and you'd pay your $100 donation. Once those steps are complete, you get our full training calendar, our full training calendar, our fundraising toolkit. You get access to the Facebook group. You start receiving our Epic Scoop, which has the training hikes in them. Um, and 
the cool thing is that this all gives you the opportunity to simply try on the program in a pretty low risk way. What I mean by that is that we have a recommitment date. So halfway through this adventure, seven weeks in and seven weeks from challenge day, um, we say, okay, April 2nd, this is the day that you're gonna commit to fully participating in both the hiking and the fundraising parts of the challenge. It's why you don't have to worry right now about whether or not this is right for you. You can take seven weeks trying it out, um, filling out the training calendar, trying on the fundraising, see if it works for you, if there seems like something you can do. Um, and then on April 2nd, you and your team will make the final, you and or your team will make the final decision about whether you wanna go all the way with us to doing the actual commitment to fundraising and to hiking on challenge day. So, the worst case scenario is you made a hundred dollar donation to Santa Rosa Community Health and you did some hiking. Um, best case scenario is that you kick butt on all of it and you're going all the way. <laughs> so on April 2nd, um, the recommitment um, is what will book you, yours and your team slot for the Epic Trail Challenge. Uh, and at the recommitment, you're saying, okay, I'm ready to hike the full amount and I and my team are ready to commit to raising our full fundraising amount. To prove that, we're gonna ask you for your credit card number. So don't worry, we're not gonna do anything with your credit card at that time, and we're probably not gonna do anything with your credit card at all. But what you're saying with your credit card number is, I promised that if by one week prior to the Epic Trail Challenge, I didn't fundraise the full amount that I committed to, I'll cover the remaining balance. So if on May 14th, you're at $2,300 and your goal is 2525, we would charge that remaining $225 to your card. So it's un, we're, we're very confident that this is unlikely to happen if you take advantage of all the full scope of fundraising support and tools that are available. So we're doing everything possible to work with you to get you so comfortable with fundraising that you'll blow right past your goal, which we had several people do last year, unexpected and unbeknownst to them. <laughs> Uh, so um, here are important dates for the Epic Trail Challenge. Um, we have already heard that the training hikes begin on February 20th. April 12th is the recommitment date. The fundraising completion date is May 14th. That's different than it was last year. This is a week prior to challenge day, which is on May 22nd. So uh, in conclusion, um, we asked our 2020 challengers how they benefited from the Epic Trail Challenge. And what they said was, uh, I got to try on the possibility of engaging in an epic lifetime achievement. I got to explore lots of Sonoma County trails. I received expert training to complete an endurance event. It was a great stress relief. Some challengers talked about how it helped them navigate stress. Some talked about their anxiety, depression, overeating, and many of the other common responses that people are having to this challenging time. Uh, another person said, I got to support the very valuable Santa Rosa Community Health. Uh, I got to make new friends, and I add, if you're into that sort of thing, you can totally be an introvert loner on this whole thing if you would like to be. Um, uh, another person said, I got to build strength and confidence physically, mentally, and emotionally. Um, some folks said, I, I got to do self-care. So mom said they got some precious time to themselves. People who work too hard got a meaningful break. Self-proclaimed couch potatoes got motivated to move. And all of us, I, I also participated in the challenge last year, um, got time to think and had copious amounts of beauty to absorb. The number one thing our challengers reported learning as a result of participating was I can do more than I thought I could. So we can help you prove that true in your life too. So with that, I'm gonna open it up to questions. Uh, and any, any, anybody's? I see you, Joanne, and then Carla. Hi, Carla, welcome back. Hi, is there, <laughs> is there are you gonna cap it at a, a certain number of people or, cause you said you had 42 last year. How many we had 42 you last year. The permit application that I filled out had 120 people on it, but that was an arbitrary number. So um, please let us have the problem of needing a cap. Okay. <laughs> Carla? Oh, Lori, my question was about the nonprofit teams. Does that mean if you work for a nonprofit or you usually fundraise for a different nonprofit? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, thank you for asking that. It's if you work for a nonprofit. Okay. No. Thank you. I like nonprofits, therefore I'm going to be on a nonprofit team. <laughs> <laughs>
Anne, go ahead. Is there a deadline for sign up? I'm waiting to hear about something else. I can't make a decision until like the middle of February. Um, no, there's not. Um, my suggestion is uh, ideally you'll make a decision before the first training hike. Um, and that we actually have training stuff that first week to prepare for the training hike. So, um, you know, if, if, to take full advantage of the program, you'll you'll want to decide before then or close to then. Right. I could decide and start training the following week. I'm getting my vaccine that week. Woo! -hoo! Excellent. Good. Okay. Uh, other questions? I have another one. Uh, Joanne and then Jen. Um, are some or any of the training hikes dog friendly? Yes. Uh, the longer, so, uh, what, it, <laughs> yay. <laughs> um, so, uh, what I learned last year is that the, the sort of longer hikes, uh, often are not dog friendly. Um, they're, uh, the, the shorter hikes, which happen, um, at mostly regional parks, which are all dog friendly, um, are so, um, and it, it you know, it depends on your dog anyway, whether they like to go on long hikes. Uh, mine likes to sit on the couch. Uh, Jen? Hi. Hi again. Um, <laughs> uh, just to follow up on Carla's question. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, we know each other from um, being longtime volunteers with Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. So it's not just that we like the nonprofit. <laughs> um, we're practically employees. Um, no, we're, we're, and we have a lot of people around us that aren't able to do what we usually do, which is fundraise for the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society and do marathons and things like that. So mm -hmm. it would be amazing if we could, I mean, I'd love to put together a team, bring in more people to this, this great cause. Um, is there any wiggle room for long-term volunteers of a particular nonprofit? Because I think it would be amazing to bring in more people to this and expose them to all the good work we're doing here. Yeah, agreed. Um, so this was a stretch from, from last year, like, okay, so several people asked for something like this. So we're kind of stepping into it and like, okay, does it work? Does it work? And feeling our way through it. Um, bless you all for being part of our, um, our learning, learning, learning uh, while we're flying the plane. Wait, what is it? Building the plane while we're flying it. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so uh, my initial response is, let us just do this one thing and then let's try to expand out into that next year because um, it, it gets complicated fast. So um, I, I'm feeling fairly uh, like let's keep it let's keep it in this in this bowl, not box. Let's keep it in this bowl and then maybe next year we can make a bigger bowl. Okay, I it just yeah I, I'm gonna have a hard time selling it at 2,500. <laughs> mm. um, so that's why I would I would love to open it up to more people who, in this tough like you said all the good things about mental oh. health and right like all that stuff I would love to help my teammates out but um, yeah I'm gonna, it's it's a hard sell so um, you know I I hope you can maybe go back to. <laughs> The, to the people and and give them a little chat um, because I'd love to bring in more people. Anyway, yeah. that's my that's my soapbox. <laughs> cool, I, I appreciate it. And honestly, the reason that we have anything at, at all this year is because people had their soapboxes last year. So I'm I'm listening, I'm listening. Um, other questions? Uh, I want to acknowledge that it's uh, eight oh one. So if you need to go, go ahead. I'm happy to stick around and um, answer other questions and also have old home week if we want. <laughs> so um, other questions? All right, I'm gonna stop this recording. In